We all have a past. Hello, it is me, Cameron Michaels from season 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Welcome to my home here in sunny, sunny, is it sunny outside? Sunny Los Angeles, California. Today I'm going to take you on a tour and show you some of my cool knickknacks and all of the looks that you may remember from season 10 and future things. You know, I've been doing this for a while now, I'm getting old. Uh, so we have some stuff to go over. I grew up in Nashville. Nashville had an impact on my drag by being a Southern drag community. And if you if you don't know, as a lot of the girls know, Southern drag is like, you, it's it's training it's training grounds training grounds for like good 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 drag and you know dancing costume like you learn how to do everything with southern drag because we take it so seriously so this is where i keep all of my jewelry it's not organized so make sure you get a good shot of that because everything else looks so perfect you have to see where i'm messy and disgusting and that is definitely my jewelry <laughs> assistant we had to make some cuts in 2020, so the assistant got fired. I would say that I am visually organized and hiddenly a hoarder. I make everything look, this is, a, we're gonna have a therapy session. This is how I work with a lot of my life. My life looks really put together and then you open a closet and it all falls. Shoes, I have no designer shoes. This is not a Violet Chachi closet. You will find nothing designer in here. These are all very cheap. Very cheap shoes. But I also dance when I do drag, so. These are all of my boots that are not torn to shreds. I keep shoes for about six months and then I have to get rid of them, so these are all newer ones. This space has worked for me in Los Angeles so far. It's beautiful compared to like where I came from in my other drag rooms. But this also doubles as my shooting space. So if I'm shooting looks, shooting video, shooting content, I'm shooting it in there. Ultimately, I would love for that to just be a drag closet. Like this, the size is okay. The size is okay. It's all right. It's not big enough. I need more space for filming and stuff too. So eventually I need a bigger room. So this is kind of my dance costume section. I, I do like to have my go-tos, my pickup, and you know, you have three or four gigs coming up and you know, we have the luxury of working in different cities. So I just take the same look and wear it over and over again. This was my Bob Mackie recreation uh, for Cher when I was doing Cher for tour. If you guys remember, this was the epic fall. Yeah, where I busted my face. I decided to step on a folding chair and it attacked me. It attacked me. And um, it pushed me to the ground and beat me up right in the middle of everyone. DragCon weekend, New York. Look up that video, it's a great one. Pre-drag race, it's a lot of performance looks. I don't press, I don't PR, I don't have, you know, all these things to do that I normally wouldn't have big costumes for. So a lot of it was like dance costumes and stuff that I would just take on the road and throw in a suitcase. Uh, this is a House of Curio, my boys in Nashville original. I did my fire number in this, so this is a good old southern drag go-to. Anything that moves and sparkles to distract from the sweat rolling off of my face is something I'm gonna wear, so. Why do I have so much red? And this is red and yellow. Is this Tina Burner's closet? I'm definitely a performer, a dancer. I love being on stage. I mean, you guys can tell that's where like I live. That's my, that's where I put most of my energy, but I had to learn to love fashion a little bit more. And mine's not even necessarily like runway fashion or couture fashion. I'm more like fantasy. That's where my heart is. Like as a gamer and I love film and cinema and the costumes like Snow White and the Huntsman and uh, The Cell and all these movies with awesome costume design. I mean like the Met Gala, I love that stuff. But am I watching like runways for inspiration? Not usually, no. This, I needed to share costume for the uh, Work the world, Asia and Australia. So my sister Asia made me that and brought it to Australia with no fitting and it fit. So, you know, she really is a seamstress. She's not faking it, you guys. She's, uh, she's actually pretty good. Oh, you guys saw this on the show. So as you know, going into a season, funds, money, the bags, the girls spend a lot of money and then you run out of money. So you end up using things that you already have. Oh, wait, I have the headpiece. I have the headpiece somewhere. Where's the headpiece? I thought this was a really cool idea for Hats Incredible, but then Asia O'Hara walked in with a dandelion on her head and we all just shook our heads and walked off stage. I mean, come on. Oh. Oh, look. 
Oh, we remember that one, don't we? Uh, I'm gonna have this one embroidered with the word choices. The entrance, oh, the entrance, the entrance look on season 10. We're really, are we really gonna talk about that? I don't know why I, in my head, I, I make some dumb decisions sometimes. I mean, I don't know what's going on in here half the time. There's not room for a lot. And that was one of the choices that I made that was like, why would you wear a meet and greet look? If that was, <laughs> if it was even a meet and greet look, I wouldn't wear it now. Um, for an entrance look, Eureka walked in in these big feathers and here I am, I'm like, I'm a little like dainty, like, and a leather harness and flowers. Spring meets BDSM. What the f was that? This was the last outfit that I chose for season 10. So clearly there was not a lot of thought process put into this. My mind didn't click that this is the first time I'm being seen in drag, so it should be over the top and glamorous and represent my drag. It was just a, oh, I'm walking in the workroom. Simple, cute, day drag. I don't know why that was in my head. You can tell where my money went that season and where it didn't, and this is where it didn't. I say my season 10 entrance look was a choice, but it was a choice in a several ways. It was a choice in like, I'm not threatening, don't, worry, don't be worried about me. And then a couple episodes later, I'm like, no, you shouldn't be worried about me. <laughs> but so it was a bad choice, but it was also a smart choice. I'm not dumb. Everything I do, I do for a reason. The workroom wasn't judged. Yeah, it was everybody else's first impression of me, but it wasn't being judged. So I put my money in the outfits that were gonna be judged. There you go. Now, going back, will I do the same thing? No, we're walking in the workroom looking stunning. But at that moment when I ran out of money, I wasn't gonna forego a, a runway look. I was gonna walk in the workroom with whatever. This was my best drag for me at the time, which was the butterfly look, which I feel like was the first look people were like, oh, you know, since I walked in with this. <laughs> and then our first episode, we made our outfit. So this was the first outfit that everyone got to see me in. They're like, I felt like the other girls were like, oh, she's really a drag queen. She's not a housewife. Conceptualizing looks for me starts usually with some kind of inspiration, be it from a movie or a video game or um, something a fan has drawn or sent me like fan art. A lot of my headpieces, the outfits that I wear with those headpieces were designed around the headpiece itself. So I find one thing that I center on and then I just design around that. I work with great designers too and I give them a lot of freedom, but I'm just like, hey, I want this, I want this to drape here or do this and then I just let them go and then we edit as we go. So it always starts with one small thing and then it just blossoms from there. So these are some of my favorite headpieces that I've worn, uh, especially this one. I mean, like, it, that doesn't scream like evil vampire god. I mean, like, when you go back to the movies and you watch, like, there's always some like headpiece or adornment. All the evil characters always have like tassels and like beads and this like headpiece and crowns of thorns. I just love looking at that. I'm like, it's something else to dress up. Like you have this big costume on, why not put something up here too? I try to go to Etsy or on Instagram and scroll and find um, artists that make headpieces. And then I will literally pick three headpieces uh, for every day of DragCon and then make looks that correspond to each headpiece. So I try to find one designer and um, kind of give them the spotlight and make looks that coordinate with the headpieces. So those are some of my favorites. The running joke with my designers for a long time was flowy with a headpiece. And it's still kind of my thing. It's still kind of my thing. Like, just make it look like an evil queen. That's all I ask. Whether she lives in the forest or she lives in a swamp or wh wherever, wherever she's from, whatever like realm she like resides over, just make her look like she's the queen. This is my favorite part of the closet because it is all of my big, amazing, over the top drag looks. So this is where my heart lies. This was DragCon last year with the matching headpiece. Oh, this was the reunion gown. You know, before I felt viciously attacked, I felt beautiful. I think that I enjoy my fantasy looks so much because those are always the characters that I gravitate towards. So whether it's movies or video games, that's my childhood. Maleficent, first love. I would run around the house in a cape and act like I was Maleficent. My mom has pictures. I didn't like the heroes. I never liked the heroes. I liked the villains. They looked cooler. They had cooler costumes, they looked cooler, they weren't like not necessarily human sometimes, they were like kind of alien looking or like demonic. And I've always connected to those type of characters. And so now I think that's really developed into my drag is like that's the type of drag that I like is this like fantasy. I kind of knew who I was in season 10 and then 
towards the finale, towards the reunion, I started really figuring out my drag. I really love this like ethereal, otherworldly, like queens, princesses, like wizards, warlocks. Like I love that type of it. So this is like, she's like, she's a forest witch. She's a forest witch. Plus I got accused of wearing costumes on season 10. So I ended up making more costumes. RuPaul's Drag Race is like a marathon pageant. And like, if you come from like a drag queen background, like you know what pageants are. If you're competitive, you like to go compete in them. I competed in two like small local pageants. I didn't even do any national ones, but it is the marathon. And it's so different because when you're doing a pageant, you're doing what you've brought to present. Like, yeah, there's an interview question or something so they get your personality, but they get what you've prepped and what you've prepared. You prepared all these looks for this pageant and that's what they're seeing, this package you've created. Drag Race, is a whole nother monster because you're doing things on the spot that you didn't expect. Like you may have brought clothes, but these acting challenges, the mini challenges, all these things that are being thrown at you are being thrown at you in the moment with eight cameras and producers and RuPaul Charles. So you don't get to prepare for that. Now you can mentally prepare, but like once you're in it and once you're there, it's a whole different monster. Oh, this one, oh, bless her heart. She made an appearance on season 10 too. So the final gown I wore for the episode for the final four was one that I already had that I wore for a pageant. I didn't expect to make it. We all know, I've talked about it before, I didn't expect to make it that far. Didn't expect to make it. Especially when, once they're like, okay, lip sync, lip sync, lip sync. I'm like, oh, they're trying to get rid of me. You can't get rid of me, bitch. I knew taking that gown, I was like, I probably won't get to wear this. But if I do, I was like, it's a nude illusion gown covered in rhinestones. It's pretty, it's cool. If I get to wear it, awesome. This was probably like, one of the better pieces I took to the show. Is it one of my better pieces now? Not so much, but it's so nostalgic for me. Any of the girls can relate to this and any future girls can relate to this. When you go to Drag Race, you take so many clothes, so many clothes, so many outfits, and you just pray that you get to wear all of them. So this is a full circle moment when you get to wear your last costume. I mean, when you make it, you make it to the final episode, final four, final three, and you get to put on your final look, meaning you wore all the looks that you took to the show, they were all seen. That is an amazing moment. So no matter how I feel about it now, <laughs> my Beyonce knockoff Met Gala gown got to be worn um, on the show. So that was a really special moment for me. This was another really fun moment for me. The headpiece is in the closet. It's falling apart because it was this big and it doesn't travel well. But this was my premiere gown for season 10. When you do the show, there's so many awesome moments. Press interviews, the finale for us, and then the premiere. So the premiere party, I wore this and I felt stunning. I felt like the only evil boss at the end of a video game. And this is when I really started diving in with one of my favorite designers in New York, Diego Montoya. Um, he and I get along so well. He gets my aesthetic. He knows when I want to do Evil Queen. He is my evil queen go-to. He knows when I want to look like a bad boss, final battle bitch. He knows what to do for me. I mean, we can't forget about this one, can we? No, we can't leave this one out. I mean, she's been through a lot, so she's a little tattered now. Um, I don't think I can part with her, so I'm gonna keep her. But the feathers, episode three, it was the moment. Oh God, it was the moment. I knew when I pulled out the feathers and the other girls were like, Oh, she brought, oh, she brought her. You mean from this? From this to this? They're like, who's this bitch? Where did she come from? Where was she, where was she when she walked in the workroom? Not to be joking at all, I really felt like when I pulled this outfit out, I felt like I gained a little respect from the fans, from the judges, from the other girls on season 10. So I finally felt like I'm a threat. You know what I mean? Like I deserve to be here. And this was that outfit for me. I don't even know why the feather look became the one that I was like, oh, this is where the money's going. But I just knew that I could go over the top with that one. I was honestly terrified and worried that I wouldn't get to wear it, that I would go home and thank God when episode three came out and they were like, this is feathers. And I was like, yes, oh yes. I was so excited because I was like, this one needs to be seen early on so people know like what to expect from me. But then of course it kind of went downhill after that. So it was like a love, it was like a love hate relationship with that one being so early in the season. Cause like, it's wow, but also, okay, well, that was one of my good looks gone. So you're like, what do I have left? Oh, look, this is Mother Michael's work again. Mother Michael's has to label everything. 
uh, RPDR Finale Gown 2018. Blue and gray, pink with flowers. I don't remember the dress being blue or gray. I remember it being lavender. But um, maybe my mom's going colorblind. Maybe we should talk about that after this segment. I'll call her. It doesn't matter when you went home, whether you went home first or whether you're still in the finale, that last moment is your moment to shine. And so I knew I wanted the biggest dress. So I figured if there was a competition, like who could have the biggest dress, I wanted to win. I didn't really care if it was like the most beautiful dress, which it was, sorry, it was stunning. I love that dress. I knew I was on a big stage and I'm like, when I walk out, I literally want to have to walk in a circle. Cause you know, we walked straight down the runway. I was like, I literally want to have to circle around so that then you can get the whole train behind me. And that's what I wanted. I just wanted this big ass dress, big ass dress, B-A-D. I had to be sewn into my finale gown, sewn into it. Um, right before I walked on stage, I busted out of my corset because I uh, probably had a, a Texas Tunyon for lunch, which was so smart. This is a Diego Montoya, by the way. He would send me video updates of the amount of people that worked on this dress to make it happen. I would honestly pull the whole thing out, but it will fill up this entire room like it did the stage. If I had to redo a look from season 10, it would clearly be the makeover challenge. Like, come on. I mean, you guys see the type of drag that I do and like the type of drag that I do now, especially. I didn't know who I was on season 10. I was like trying to be all these different things and now I really know who I am. And me walking into a makeover challenge now, it's like, oh, headpiece, something evil queen, something flowy, just gorgeous glamour. I would know what to do now, not a couple of leotards and a curly wig. Like I know. So this is where I get ready and I have a background that I set up for filming. Um, don't you love all my different light bulbs? Isn't it great? Yeah, actually, I don't use any of these light bulbs. This is just for show. This is just because you guys are here. Um, something about this mirror, um, I think it's on low right now. Let's see. You guys wanna go to the sun? Yeah, yeah, that, uh, 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 mm, no, nobody needs to see themselves that bright. I think my biggest surprise and what a lot of the fans notice about me is how different I am after the show. <laughs> it's because I was so absolutely terrified the whole time I was there. Not only of the way I was gonna be perceived, but a lot of the things that we do on the show, we're not doing in our normal everyday drag life. Like we're not all comedians, we're not all doing stand up, we're not all doing roasts. And then so when you get there and you realize that you're not amazing at something and you know the whole world's gonna watch you not be amazing at it, it's terrifying. But now I don't care anymore. I'm like, yeah, I'm not good at certain things. Okay, I'm great at other things. I'm kind of leaning into cosplay a little bit, which you would think I would already be in, but a lot of my characters were kind of created out of nowhere. And now I'm appreciating doing like actual cosplay like with the She-Hulk, like I'm excited. I, I would love to do more of that because I think it's really fun to take a well-known character and then do your take on it. Because not only is it something visually cool for people to look at, but then something clicks in people's brains and they're like, oh, that's so-and-so. And then it, like the, the appreciation is there for it. But I think, I'm, I think I'm transitioning into some new looks that I don't even want to talk about yet that we may see from me soon. So I'm gonna try something different and something new and see how it goes, so stay tuned. Okay, whose idea was this? This is how drag really is. It's not fabulous, stuff's not hung up. We shove it in suitcases and uh, we just steam it before we walk on stage and it also smells disgusting. So there you go, welcome to drag.